In life, we will face a lot of paths, a lot of tracks that we can take to reach our goals. But not all of them are considered to be correct or right paths to take. And so today, I'll be talking about the paths that we might face in our lives and what are the best ways to react to them. Now, part of where you're going is knowing where you came from. With that being said, Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, two very famous writers with multiple number one bestselling books, classified the paths that we might face on the journeys to our aforesaid goals into four different paths. We have the right path, the wrong path, the left path, and the no path. Now starting off with the right path and all contrary to the common belief, the right path is usually clear, illuminate and very easy to choose. Now even if it wasn't that clear, if we look hard enough, we will see a lot of signs, we will see a lot of signals that will point us into the right direction. Now, let us say we have a college student, Muhammad for example. Now, Muhammad has a quiz tomorrow and he already set his goal. He wants to get a full mark in his quiz. And in order to do that, he chose a path that he thinks is the right path. He decided to go home, start studying real hard for the quiz, take a small break, five minutes or so, revise once, revise again, and then go to bed early to have a good night's sleep. Now, it is pretty obvious to Muhammad, as well to all of us, that this path is the right path. And that is why he chose it, and that is why he will probably get the full mark he wanted. Now, as I said, the right path is clear. It's very easy to choose. And yet, we always hear of people not choosing the right path. And when asked why, they will probably say, it wasn't that clear. I didn't know this path was the right path. I thought that path was the right path. When in fact, all of these claims, they're just excuses that we make up. Because deep down, inside our subconscious mind, we did not want to go down the right path. Maybe because we thought it's too hard, it's full of obstacles, it's long, etc. We did not want to choose it. Now, moving on to the second possible path, the wrong path. Now, watch out because this path can be tricky. Because even though it's blatantly incorrect, totally false and completely wrong, it sometimes appears to be beautiful, tantalizing and very, very easy to choose. Now, I'm gonna give you a simple example for one path, an example that we are all familiar with, whether we like to admit it or not. Cheating. Now, <laughs> back again to our friend Muhammad. He got a full mark in his, in his first quiz. He chose the right path, he got a full mark. Good for him. But now, his mentality changed, his way of thinking changed. He thinks, he is too smart to study. He's a genius in his own words. He will get a full mark whether he studies or not. And so he has another quiz tomorrow again. So since his mentality changed, this time he chose a path that people would usually avoid. He decided to go home, have a very big lunch. And then to take a rest from this lunch, he decided to play some video games. And as if that wasn't a bad enough decision, no, he wants to serve the internet, you know, social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatnot. And then, finally, after wasting all that time, he sleeps. Now, we might think that he forgot about the quiz, or did he? Actually, he did not. But what is going through his mind right now is the following. I am a genius. I got a full mark in the first quiz. I will get a full mark in the second quiz. No problemo. It's easy. And 
So what if I faced a question that I don't know the answer of? My buddies and I had a little agreement. Tomorrow, in our quiz, we're gonna do some group work of our own. We're gonna share our knowledge, you know, no harm's done, just, just sharing. Now comes tomorrow, and by some miracle, he actually doesn't fail his quiz. No, he gets a full mark, thanks to his friends. Now, he might have gotten a full mark or a good mark on paper, but he actually failed miserably in life because all this information that he had to learn and he had to memorize would prove to be very crucial in his future. Now, even though it was clear to Muhammad, as well to anybody who decides to choose the wrong path, it's clear to them, all the signs and signals point out that this path is the wrong path. Don't choose this path. They still choose it. And of course, they will have some excuses. They will claim that this path was the easier path or the better path. When in fact, if we look at this matter from a more objective point of view, we will see that the negatives, they will easily outweigh the positives. There is one more excuse that they might use, and this is my personal favorite. They will tell you, this wrong path had its benefits, had its positives. When in fact, these positives they talk of, they're usually shallow, trivial, and even sometimes fictitious, they're not real. To the point that choosing this wrong path because of these benefits seems utterly ridiculous and silly to a lot of people, a lot of sane people, that is. Now, thirdly, we have the right path, the left path, sorry. Now, what is this left path? Well, the name of this path is actually a little play on words because, as I said in the beginning, we have right path meaning correct, right? But we also have the right path in the sense of the direction, right? And since we have right path, we also have a left path. Now, what is this left path? Well, sometimes when we choose a path and we're moving down that path, so far so good, suddenly that path splits into two equal but opposite paths. Now, naturally, we will stop. We're confused. We don't know which way to go. As any sane person would do, we have to collect all the data, information, signs, signals, anything that will help us in making the decision. We will process it and then come out with the result. Now, in our situation, the right path is indeed the right path. But so is the left path. What to do? Three very simple steps. Do it with me. First step, close your eyes. Second step, take a very deep breath. And then the third step, the big step, choose one of either path. It doesn't matter because if your calculations are correct and both paths are right paths and they will take you to the same endpoint, then it wouldn't matter which path you choose. What it? Exactly. Now, over to our friend Muhammad again. He realized that the only reason he didn't flunk his quiz was because of his friends. It's not because he's smart. It's not because he's a genius. No, it's pure luck. And so, his mentality changed again. He's back on the right track. Thank God. And he has another quiz again. But this quiz is not tomorrow. No, it's set for next week. And this time, he has two paths. No, two correct paths that he can take. A right one and a left one. Now, the right one would be the same path he chose the first time, you know, then out of the quiz, studying hard, revising once, twice, sleeping early, etc. The other right path, the left path, would include spreading the amount of studying on the duration of this week, and then the, the night of the quiz, you maybe revise once, twice, have a very relaxing evening, and go home, uh, and no, the next day he will go to the quiz relaxed, clear-minded, and ready. Both of these paths, they are right paths. And both of these, these paths will probably get him the full mark that he wants. Now, the fourth possible path, or the no path, 
is actually, and very paradoxically, not a real path. It's not a real path. No, it is rather the state of not choosing any of the possible paths. How so? Well, some people, when faced with a situation where they have to make decisions, they decide that it is better for them, it is safer for them to stay and freeze in this decision-making phase rather than actually making their decision and moving on with their lives. There is, this is very dangerous, if you ask me. We should not fall for it. Why? Well, simply because when you stand frozen in your place, not only are you not getting any closer to your goal, no, you're actually moving farther because you're standing in your place. Other people will reach their goals. Other people will fulfill their dreams. And you're still standing. You will start thinking to yourself, I can never do this. It's impossible. Tom Cruise couldn't do it. And finally, after time passes, you will give up on your dream. And you will opt for the dream that you think is easier. Now, I know for a fact that no one in this hall today is willing to give up, right? Good. So, in order for us not to fall for, for this no path and not give up on our dreams, all we have to do is, again, look for all the signs, signals, stories of other people who went down the paths. Process them. Take five minutes. It won't take you more than five minutes to make the decision. And do not be afraid to make the decision. Be brave. Because no matter which path you choose, it will definitely 100% be better than not choosing any path at all. Now, there is one more situation I would like to talk about. Let us say you set your goal, you chose your path, and you're moving. So far, so good. No problems. But then, unfortunately for you, you have an epiphany. You realize that this path you're moving on is the wrong path. And so you stop. And you think to yourself, what to do? What to do? Do I go back all the way to the beginning, retrace my steps, choose another path, and start all over again? Definitely no. What you have to do is you, yourself, and no one else, you have to make a little nice detour that will take you from this wrong path into this right path. Now, this will not be an easy thing to do, believe me, you, but with enough determination and with the power of will, anything, and I really mean anything in life, is possible. And as Thomas Carlyle said, the granite block, which was an obstacle in the way of the weak, became a stepping stone in the pathway of the strong. Finally, when we are faced with a situation where we have to make important decisions, we have to be thorough, we have to be objective, and we have to be completely detached from emotions. Now, by doing this, our chances of making the right choices will increase drastically. Also, we have to pay attention to all the little details because this teeniest, tiniest detail that you think is not of an importance might be that crucial factor in your decision-making process. It could decide the whole thing. And lastly, do not just simply choose a path because other people chose it, because your friends chose it, someone you know chose it. No, don't be a follower. Be a leader. Choose your own path. Be the king of yourself. And most importantly, I could not emphasize this more. Do not be afraid of making your own decisions. Thank you.